Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Elliot. I'm Xander. And together we are... Eliander. Uh, this is the making of the Over the Moon short film that we shot over the summer in 2021 on the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. We're going to talk through the short film, press pause, deep dive into certain shots, and talk about how we achieved what we achieved. Let's do it. We're off. What are we looking at? <laughs> Currently, we're looking at a title... As it explains here, this movie set after the events of the feature film Cosmos. We thought it would be a really cool idea to jump back into that world and tell a bit of a sequel story. Um, people have enjoyed the movie, so why not? Um, this is a visual effect? This is a visual effect, yeah. I did quite a bit of visual effect work here. All the scope shots that you see, all the POVs, they're, they're all visual effects, except for the moon. And we'll get onto that in a bit. The moon is very real. The moon is the greatest visual effect of all. So there's something cool here I think that's worth discussing. On Cosmos, we had this kind of skylight look in the background. So when we shot the film, being a no-budget movie, um, we just kind of lit the area that we were filming in. And when we got into post, started cutting it together, it, it kind of looked like actors in a very dark space. It was like in a black box. Yeah. There was no depth. Yeah. So I went in in visual effects and I put skylines in and I put tree lines and some little stars and things like that just to give us that sense of depth obviously that 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 was a lengthy process for a feature film it worked well though it did work very well yeah i was really happy with it in fact we did some tests and we were like is this going to work and it worked so well that then elliot just kept going <laughs> can you do another one i think it started off being about eight shots mm. and then it it's probably about being 70 mm. something stupid so naturally i wanted to avoid that on this film and um the pocket 6k pro it's a lot more sensitive than the original pocket that we were filming on for Cosmos. And so we thought, hang on, could we shoot this across dusk and capture that dusk light in camera? That was the challenge we set ourselves. So in preparation, we got out in the garden, we put some lights up and we started doing tests across sunset to see how long we had to film um, in order to, you know, how much time we had to be able to fit this film in. And what we were doing is we were kind of riding the relationship between the key light and the backlight and the sky in the background. Elliot had his light meter. He was taking readings, looking kind of... Looking like I know what I'm doing. Looking like you know what you're doing. Um, and what we needed to do is just ensure that ratio was the same. Regardless of how dark the sky was, the key had to always match. Because we're filming in a very short period of the evening, we want to know how quickly the light falls. So it just fly past me then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a bat flew past me. So we can adjust our... Um, ISO and our camera settings to basically try and keep the light levels the same, the sky levels the same. And I'm taking a measurement of the sky. We're finding that the sky is dropping by about one stop of exposure every five minutes, um, which is pretty fast. At the start of the night, we'd have the ND in, obviously the built-in NDs on the Pocket 6K Pro right there. And- ISO right down. ISO right down. We had to blast um, our actress with light to compete with the, the brighter background. And then as the night drew in and it got darker, NDs came out, ISO went up. Um, and key lights came down. Key lights came down. It was like this really interesting relationship. That's, that's great. That's really great. Okay, and on this one, look up again over the telescope to the moon. All right, so let's, uh, let's just have a look. I think it works really well. I think so. Too. I think it looks pretty good. And I have to say, blowing our own trumpet, we didn't have to do an enormous amount of tweaking in, in the grade, did we? We didn't. And you put a few twinkling stars in the background. I did, yeah. There. In that one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see in the background, just to uh, on the right of frame, very, very subtle. Um, but in the sky, there is a little out of focus star. Super subtle. Something interesting here to talk about as well is the, the eye light. Yeah. Um, the eye light, when you look down a telescope at night, you look at the moon, it dawns on you how incredibly bright the moon actually is. We wanted to replicate that feeling. And so to achieve that, we took... Um, looks like I'm just chilling out here. <laughs> checking, <laughs> I'm just checking my just phone. Checking uh, we took a phone torch and we magic armed the uh, phone in front of the lens of the telescope and shone. Shone is the word. Shone, shined. Shone this light down the lens of the telescope and that obviously bounced up into Alexis's eye and that just allowed us to get that in-camera practical uh, light source. Okay, let's go. Moving on. So much of this film is 
close on her eye. So it was really important that we could see uh, see it nice and clearly, but also read those small micro yeah. micro expressions. Do you want to talk about the telescope and the moon? Let's talk about the telescope and the moon. Pause, Pause it. Pause. So when we first received this camera, the f- what we wanted to do with it is we wanted to attach it to our telescope. And we thought with the right attachment, we could we could bolt the uh, Pocket 6K Pro onto the back of the scope and um, went out on one fine night to to get some beautiful 6K shots of the moon. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Wow, that is bright. Let's turn the ISO down. Oh my God, look Ooh. at that. Can you see how quickly it's moving? Look at that, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You see like the different, the different colors. You see greens and blues and oranges, peaches. That's stunning, absolutely stunning. We've got a beautiful full moon tonight. Uh, we've been waiting for quite a while to get the Terminator line on the moon, which is the, the line between the shade and the light, just, just for the right place so we could see some of the craters. And uh, it's a perfectly clear night. It's not too cold here either. It's about 10 degrees Celsius. The uh, telescope lens is so long that we can't actually get a full frame shot of the, <laughs> of the moon uh, all in one shot. So what we're doing is we're locking the camera off. We're letting the moon move through it, focusing on the bottom half of the moon. And then uh, we are doing the same for the top half. And then we'll composite them together in post to give ourselves a full glorious moon in more than 6K actually. Um, which will give us a lot of flexibility to do what we want to do with it. So it's all going well so far. And uh, yeah, so far so good. <laughs> I composited them together into, uh, well, what we coined the Mega Moon. <laughs> the Mega Moon, which we are going to make available, aren't we? We are. For download. Yeah. If anyone wants the Mega Moon as stock to use in their shorts or using documentaries or whatever. It's a beefy, you know, Mega Moon. So yeah. you, you're welcome to use it. And that. then you created in visual effects this, uh, what is it, like... Yeah, this is like the eyepiece, the eyepiece POV, really. So I was working in DaVinci Resolve, um, specifically in Fusion that's in, in Resolve. Went in there, created some masks, some vignettes, some diffraction, added a bit of imperfection to it. And um, yeah, we got this this kind of eyepiece thing. Around the edge, you've, there's some little dust particles that you've put in. Almost yeah. they've collected in the edge of the eyepiece. Yeah, a little bit of like artistic license, really, to give it a bit more. So, yeah. We used the Mega Moon, and it, I think it looks awesome. Some shots in the bedroom here. Yeah, do you want to talk about those? Yeah, can do. Uh, let's, here we go. Oop. So these are very, very close-up shots. We uh, filmed with our very favorite Sans Hunter 28mm, and we stacked quite a lot of close-focus diopters, one on top of another. And we just set up these little vignettes. Uh, got some trinkets that we have from our own childhood growing up, loving space, loving exploration, and lit it practically pretty much with a desk lamp. There is a lava lamp in this sequence, which was a pain to shoot, trying to time your camera move with the tilt of a lava bubble. Yeah, we spent a long time doing that, and that shot never even... 50 takes, I think. Never even made pressed. it in. Maybe we should splice that shot we'll in. We'll put that in. Right here. Um, but you can see a lot of these shots have a soft top orange glow, which... We wanted to uh, suggest the glow of the lava lamp, but actually it was just that iPad with a an orange image, full screen, full brightness. And I would often be just holding that above frame um, just to give a little bit of orange yeah. film. It was a technique that we used loads on Cosmos. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got loads of behind the scenes pictures of us with an iPad here and an iPad there. They make great little, very versatile light panels. Light panels. Onwards. These are our little space figurines as well. Yeah. My space shuttle. This was shot up a hill quite local to us Mm -hmm. with our very good friend and fellow collaborator, Mark. Again, that lovely background Mm -hmm. with the sky. We had a really lovely sunset. This shot also, um, we, that warm tungsten underglow uh, that was literally using the lantern that we bought off Amazon two or three days before the shoot. Uh, and we would move it in as a little movable 
light source, bring it around this way a bit, put it that way a bit. Yeah, yeah, and it's something we can do now, you know, cameras are so sensitive. Just generally, that's like a really good thing to just touch on. You know, if you look at the behind the scenes material from making this film, we've got the pocket camera straight out of the box, um, no additional accessories, very basic. We've got three LED panel lights and we've got a lantern, you know, and an iPhone. I don't even think there were three panel lights. I think there were two. It was two, two yeah. yeah. So we love this kind of filmmaking. We feel it's a challenge. We feel it, um, it certainly it's a great test of the camera and, and, and what it can do. It's also just this nice reminder that we can just grab equipment like this, get out there now. It's lightweight, it's battery operated LED panel lights, you know, it's... um. It's a great time to be a filmmaker, so we dig this kind of filming. <laughs> it's definitely a test. It's a test of skills and things, so give it a go if you haven't. Get get your camera and go and just make a film. A little bit of a throwback to Cosmos and the Astronauts. That's my watch. <laughs> no, got some visual effects coming out now. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about those. Um, we, we're back with the Mega Moon, but now we've got this spacecraft in front of it. So um, anyone who's seen Cosmos will know how it ends and why this is relevant. Um, made it in Blender. Probably took me two to three hours to put this together. Didn't take me very long because I knew it was going to be in silhouette. So all I needed was some kind of micro details that would pick up. I used an array modifier, mirror modifier, wireframe modifiers. And I just very quickly kind of managed to... It was like doing a sketch in 3D, really. You suggested, I think it was your suggestion, a little orbital... Little yeah, the little, the little. Uh, if you look very closely, there are tiny little crafts also flying around the mothership as if a little taxi service or something going from one edge of the mothership to the other, or maybe drone ships or yeah. people going out on a little exploration. Could be so. kind of energy. Could um, be anything, could something be. to do with like capturing solar energy. But we also thought it was quite cool because, again, at the end of Cosmos, you see this circular shape pretty cool to suggest that like there's more dimension to it so the circle was the kind of flat on view of the ship but actually there was depth to the ship as well mm. so we have this like central column in there and it means that as it orbits as it moves across this shot there's a slight amount of parallax on it and it gives us a bit more a bit more interest a bit more depth to work with so that was that Tycho Crater Tycho Crater what a beauty A little bit of silence in here. That was that mm. was your idea. It works really nicely. It's kind of this little pause, this beat, this breather, and allows us to come back in when the music returns and, and carry on. This footage in her study now in her home office uh, tried to get this feeling of an of an evening sun coming in through a window, filmed with our trusty dado kit. We've got a Apollo astronaut on the shelf here, and he is bathed in a sunset coming through the window. And we've got a bit of dingle here uh, with some grass to almost give us the effect of like a palm blowing out the window. We also have a dado lamp. It's got a projector lens on it for the Venetian blind effect. And we've got our little slider here. And as you can see, we're just going to have a nice push in into focus on the astronaut. She was somewhere warm, somewhere maybe palmy. As I was doing the push in, you were nudging. just nudging the, the, the go boat. I had to channel my inner... My inner grass. In a wind. My inner wind. <laughs> Sounds risky. Now we're getting to the point here where we're making a bit of a reveal. These nice tight macro close-ups. Got a bit of heat haze on there as well. Yeah, a little bit of heat distortion on the on the ship there. Just obviously when you look through a telescope at night. You look at the stars, you look at the moon, and there's there's a little bit of atmospheric distortion. So throw that on there just to give it a little bit more realism. Oh, that's this shot, a pretty beautiful shot. I love this shot. So the actual original plate is it's a wider shot. We punched in because we shot in six K. But you make something like this, you comp the moon in the background, and you're like, you know what? This is um, this is a really cool shot. And there's a temptation to like make it last longer and make a bit more of a deal of it um yeah i i think this is like like a, a key frame really. i think it's my favorite shot of the shot yeah i love it and you can actually see if you look at the moon there's the you can see the ship silhouette moving across it as well to me that just captures like my experiences of getting out into a field with a telescope 
That's where that highlight pays off. Mm -hmm. uh, Those are the Venetian blinds on there. Oh yeah, you can see the yeah. Venetian blind projector and a little bit of movement in the background and then a final push in using a Canova K3 slider. Um, just a short 80 centimeter slider actually. And you put a little bit of movement on that. Yeah, thing. yeah, this is cool. This is um, something we did in Cosmos. Yeah, this is just a shot of a, over Alexis's shoulder. It was a static shot, but to kind of match with the flow of the previous shots, we had two push-ins. Um, we thought we could add a little bit of fake, fake parallax, fake push-in. You scale up your foreground element, you shift your background element. There's a proper way of doing this, and then there's the, <laughs> the hack way of doing it, and I kind of did the hack way. The proper way is to set it all up in 3D space, and then it's all very accurate, but actually... We get away with it. I just uh, moved the moon a little bit and make, made Alexis bigger. Eyeball it, yeah, it worked out fine. What else we got? Not much left, actually. One final shot, I think. There you go, there's that final push in and some lovely subtle performance here from Alexis. A little smile and a little half blink there. And Cut to black. Cut to black. And in very Eliander fashion, the credits list is, um, is well, tiny. Short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were really impressed with the, the Pocket 6K Pro. And, and what it allowed us to do on this film. It was a huge leap going from the original pocket camera to this. So many things have changed in between. So that's the making of our Cosmos short, Over the Moon. Hope you enjoyed watching it, diving into the process of how we made the film. Maybe it's inspired you to, to just grab a camera, whatever camera it is, get out there and you know make your own films, whether it's short or long. Both Cosmos and Over the Moon were made using pretty minimal resources. So yeah, it is possible. It can be done. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We try to answer everything. And you can also reach out to us on other platforms. We're on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. <laughs> Sounds like a voice message. <laughs> Send us a message and we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. After the beep. After the beep. Don't forget to check out the Mega Moon. Yeah, link below.